we've all heard that sound. And immediately, thoughts of futuristic technology or technology not from this world come to mind. And that's exactly what Droid was trying to do with their commercials. They wanted you to feel that by purchasing this phone, you were buying a piece of technology that was from another planet. And it was a huge success. If you owned a Droid phone, you felt like you had the most powerful piece of technology that others couldn't compete with. What we don't realize is how important the Droid brand was for Verizon and for Android. Let's take a look at how this iconic brand got started and let's see where it is today. This is Tech History. It was November 2009. Apple had just released the iPhone 3GS and it was changing the smartphone industry completely. Almost every manufacturer was trying to create the iPhone killer with very little success. Google and Android were trying to gain traction in the smartphone space, but the iPhone seemed to be dominating the space completely. One company that was very happy to see all the success that iPhone was having was obviously AT&T. They had the exclusive rights to the iPhone since it was released in 2007, and other carriers were desperately looking for the next big phone that would lure customers to them. One of those companies was Verizon. They were desperate for something new that would help them compete with AT&T and the iPhone. That's where Android comes in. Verizon decided to take a gamble on the up and coming operating system and push forward with Droid. When you think of Droid, one of the first things that comes to mind is Motorola. But HTC also released many Droid branded phones with Verizon. Verizon released the Motorola Droid and the HTC Droid Eris on November 6, 2009. Verizon focused heavily on marketing the Motorola Droid. It was released with a 3.7 inch 854 by 480 resolution screen and a slide out QWERTY keyboard. Not very impressive today, but in 2009 it was exactly what people who wanted something other than iPhone were looking for. The Motorola Droid had a very successful launch, selling about 250,000 units in its first week. Even though that number was still well below the iPhones, it was the best-selling Android phone for that time, and more importantly, it helped Verizon realize that they finally had a real iPhone alternative. And their Droid campaign was now just getting started. Motorola and Verizon now began releasing Droid phones every year, multiple times per year, but the next real popular phone, the next flagship phone that Verizon and Motorola released was the Droid X. It was released July 15, 2010. The phone was a huge success, becoming the second highest selling phone of August 2010, only behind the iPhone 4. It had a huge, for the time, 4.3 inch display and was one of the first phones that pushed towards the large displays we see in our phones today. Verizon customers now had a true iPhone competitor, and debates even began to brew on which phone was better. All this continued to help Google and Android gain traction and popularity in the smartphone space. More and more people began to see Android as a true competitor to iOS and even creating the fanboys that we see today. Then the Motorola Droid X2 was released, and that traction kind of stopped. The phone was a huge disappointment to Droid fans, mainly because it was way too similar to the Droid X. Motorola and Verizon released a few other Droid phones following the Droid X2, but nothing had the same success quite like the Droid X and the original Droid did, until Motorola decided to go back to its heyday with the Razer. On November 11th, 2011, yes, 11, 11, 11, Motorola released the Motorola Droid Razor with an all new sleek design and with a thickness of just 7.1 millimeters. It was the thinnest smartphone at launch. The design of this new phone became popular with many Droid fans and Motorola 
once again had the success they were looking for. The design even made iPhone owners jealous. And once again, it gave Android the traction it needed to gain ground on the iPhone's popularity. Unfortunately, after the release of the Droid Razor, Verizon and Motorola were never able to really duplicate the same success they had. Verizon was finally able to release the iPhone on their network as well, and this could have affected the focus that they put towards the Droid brand. Motorola continued to release Droid phones, but with very little success. The last Droid branded phone they released was on September 8th, 2016 with the Moto Z Play Droid, but it wasn't very successful, mainly because it seemed to be a Moto Z Play that was branded Droid for Verizon. Even though the Droid brand is not what it used to be, there's no way you can deny the impact it had on making Android what it is today and also giving Verizon the edge it needed to compete with AT&T and the iPhone. Personally, my first Droid phone was the Droid X, and when I first got it, I loved it. In fact, it was the real reason why I have such a passion for technology today. It sparked my interest in technology and innovation that I wish other companies today had. 